Since we're studying substitution techniques to solve differential equations, we may as well talk about Bernoulli equations because this is another substitu substitution technique and a marvelous one at that that's going to take care of solving some of these first order differential equations that we can't otherwise solve. And it's a really, really cool idea. So before, what we've been talking about are substitution techniques that change homogeneous or like a, an obvious substitution, that's a composition, into something that we can use separable equations technique for. Now Bernoulli, what this technique does, what Bernoulli equations are, is a very specific form of a differential equation that when we do a substitution, we'll change it not into something that's separable, but something that is linear. And here's how it works. It's a really cool idea, very fascinating that, that, um, that this equation exists for us and the substitution works. But here's the idea. If you have a differential equation where you have, here's the key, where you have I don't care what this is, but you have y to the first power, and I don't care what this is, but you have y to some other power. Now, why can't it be the same power? If this is a power 0, then this is 1, and you have something that's linear already. If this is a power 1, then these two things can be factored, the y and the y to the first. Then you have something that's separable. So if this is 0 or 1, you either have linear or you have separable. And this doesn't, this doesn't matter. But if n is any other power besides 0 or 1, you have something that's called a Bernoulli equation. So differential equation plus something that's y to the first power and something that's y to a power greater than that. Oh, sorry, a power different than 0 or 1. It doesn't have to be greater. Uh, but a power that's not 0 or 1. So we're looking for two terms here. We're looking for one term that has y in it and another term that has y to a power that's not 0 or 1. Now, here's the idea. This is really cool. If that's the case, I think I said cool four times. Are you counting my cools? That means that this is really cool. If that's the case, and we make this substitution v equals y to the 1 minus n, Here's what happens with these Bernoulli equations. So we're looking at it. We're going uh, not separable, not linear, not an easy basic substitution. Oh, but wait, I have one term with the y in the first, one term with the y not to the 0 or 1 power. Let's make the substitution. Here's what happens with it. When we make the substitution, when we solve this for y, we're going to get some, some factor that when we, when we um, have this substituted back into our Bernoulli equation, it's going to make something that is linear. It's going to eliminate v's in a lot of places. It's going to leave one v raised to the first power right there, and everything else would be x's. Uh, an awesome idea. Very, very important for us to understand how to do these things. If this is not something that we can do directly, maybe a Bernoulli equation will work. And what we're looking for is y to the first power, y to any other power. And we're going to make this substitution v equals y to the 1 minus n. And like every other substitution technique we've had, we're going to solve this for y. We're going to go ahead and take the derivative dy dx. We're going to make a substitution for dy dx. We're going to make a substitution for y. We're going to make a substitution for y to the nth power. And then what we're going to do is we're going to multiply to get rid of whatever piece is over here. Because they're going to have one. It's going to be something dv dx. And when we multiply by that piece that gets rid of it, this is going to change to v to the first power. And then it's going to be linear, and we use these linear differential equations techniques to solve the rest of it. Let's look at one example. Let's go through it. I'm going to explain all of this again as we're going through, uh, because this was, this was a little bit vague, because you, you haven't seen it yet. Uh, but this is, this is how it works. So Let's firstly look at our differential equation. We look at it, we go, hey, is that anything that we can deal with? Is that uh, something I can take a basic integral with? No. Could I view it as separable? Yes, you could. You could divide both sides by y plus y to the third and get 1 over y cubed plus y. And you could factor out the y and get y times y squared plus 1. And you could use partial fractions and see where that leads you. If it's possible, cool. Maybe there's an easier way. Can you use a substitution technique? Well, 
not um not homogeneous there, there's i don't really wouldn't want to build any x's in there uh is it separable or linear it's close is it bernoulli can we try bernoulli and make this into a bernoulli equation here's what bernoulli looks for bernoulli says look at your differential equation if you have one term with y to the first power and one term with y to not the first power that one that satisfies the bernoulli equation here's what we want to do we're going to try to structure this as a linear. What linear meant is you want the dy dx with the function that has y to the first on one side. You want everything else on the other side. You go, well, that, that's not linear. Exactly. That's why we need a substitution. So the substitution we're going to make is going to create for us something that when we multiply both sides to get rid of a piece right over here, it's going to create something to the first power. It's going to get rid of all of this. All of these views on the right-hand side are going to be gone. And what that substitution is, is always v to the, no, sorry, v equals y to the 1 minus whatever the other power happens to be. In this case, it's 3. y to the 1 minus 3. You go, okay, well that's v equals y to the negative 2 power. I'm going to pause right there. I want to show you exactly what we're doing. So we have something that is a Bernoulli equation. If we have a derivative with respect to uh, x, if we have y to the first power, notice how that's on one side. Just like every linear ever, this looks exactly like a linear right now. But we have another function of x with other y's. This is what creates for us the Bernoulli equation rather than just a linear. If I erase that, that's a linear differential equation. We can solve it. We know techniques for that. But with this, you go, well, what am I supposed to do now? Get rid of that thing. You go, How do I get rid of that thing? If we make a substitution v equals y to the 1 minus n, if we solve that for y, like every substitution technique ever, if we solve that for y, and, well, that we've done before, solve it for y and take a derivative, dy dx, to replace dy dx, then what we're going to get is we're going to get some function of v times dv dx. We're going to have this as a function of v. We're going to have this as a function of v to a power. And when we go ahead and multiply to get rid of the piece that's in front of dv dx, it's going to cancel all this out. It's going to create this as a difference of 1. A difference of 1. Why do I want a difference of 1? So that I get v to the first power. We're taking this, making a simple substitution, and it's going to create something that's linear. Let's see how that works. So, uh, y to the first power, write it as linear. y to the third power, leave it over here. The n part, the n part is this n. So, you go, okay, what's my substitution? Let's do v equals y to the 1 minus 3. Why we're choosing this guy is because this is the piece that's causing the problems. If that wasn't there, that'd be linear. It'd be easier. But now we go, I want to get rid of that. How's it going to work? Well, since derivatives subtract 1 and we're multiplying both sides, we're going to get rid of that difference of 1 for this piece and over here, but it's going to build a v to the first power. We're going to see that right now. So if we have v equals y to the 1 minus 3, that's v equals y to the negative 2. If we solve that for y, Eh, probably an easier way to do that. Now, so y equals v to the negative one half power. So solving that for y, we need to remember how these substitutions work in general. We need to remember that um, right here, I'm just multiplying both sides by one half, one half power. We need to remember that when we do a substitution, we're wrapping up. In this case, it's not all of the y's. So that's different. With the, with the substitution techniques that change into separable equations, we want to wrap up all of the y's in our substitution. Here we don't, because what we want is we want to be able to substitute the v in both places, but then have this one change into v to the first. Not just disappear completely, but change into v to the first. We want this one to disappear. This substitution does it. So all of our substitutions wrap up some y's and v's, solves for y, and then takes a derivative. So we can replace 
basically two ideas, all the stuff involving y's and the dy dx. Let's try that right now. So when we take dy dx, we bring down the power, subtract 1, and we get dv dx based on the chain rule. This is implicit. v was a function of x. You're always going to have that. Hopefully this is familiar to you because you've done lots of substitutions right now. So we looked for our terms. We said, I want it to be linear. Write it as linear. Oh, I got another piece with y to some power. Cool. Make your substitution. That's now a Bernoulli equation. If v equals y to the, it's always this. It's always 1 minus whatever that power is. And I want you to see what's going to happen. If we do 1 minus whatever that power is, and we subtract, and we solve for y, think in your head right now, why do we need to solve for y? It should have bounced up out of that that we need to replace this along with our y. So we need to replace this as well. So once you solve for y and take a derivative, we can now replace dy dx. We can also replace every instance of y. So let's do that. And be, be careful with it. There's lots of things going on. So from here, I'm going to start with this guy. So dy dx, I'm going to replace it with this. So I'm not going to have dy dx anymore. I'm going to have negative 1 half v to the negative 3 halves dv dx. So dy, no, that garbage, minus, minus. Y, no, I'm not going to have Y anymore. I have solved for Y right here. I'm going to replace this Y with V to the 1 half, well, negative 1 half. Equals. And then I'm going to replace this Y with V to the negative 1 half as well. Let's pause for a moment because this is typically where students get lost and go, wow, that's a lot of stuff. This looks different from the other substitution techniques. You're right. This is a very specific form where we're trying to build a linear. And in doing so, we're going to make a, a very special substitution. We're going to make a substitution that if it's, one, if it's 1 minus that power and we solve for y, instead of going directly and saying, hey, this one part is v, Notice how v equals something that's not even up there. But what it does do is if I solve for y, it gives me v such that when I, when I take a derivative of it, this is separated by 1, by that, that negative 1. If I multiply both sides times whatever it does, whatever happens to undo this thing, it's going to create v to the first power here. That's why we do that 1 minus whatever that power is. When we solve for y, it creates this difference of 1 so that when I multiply both sides, it's going to leave me with nothing, nothing in terms of v, and then v to the first power there. So the whole idea of a Bernoulli equation is make it look linear as much as you can. Do a substitution, 1 minus whatever that power is, Solve it for y, replace your y with what you solve for, replace your dy dx with what the derivative is, and then that's going to finish the job of creating this linear for us. So I know this, this is a lot of work already. We're not even to like, the, the integral yet. But we've looked at it and we said y to the first, y to not the, not the first. Take v equals 1 minus that number. All right, we got that. Solve it for y, take a derivative, and then we're making that substitution. So dy dx becomes whatever dy dx is after you solve for y and taking a derivative. y itself, it's not a direct substitution for your v. y itself is, you need to find this after you solve for v. So y is going to be v to the negative 1 half. y to the third is v to the negative 1 half. Sure, yeah, that's still y, same y, but now to the third power. Let's see how this works when we, when we go a little bit further. Let's simplify the right-hand side. I want you to notice something. What I mentioned earlier was that what this technique does, it creates this 
this idea that there's a difference of, of one between here and here. And so what we're, what we're doing is we need to make this look linear. Remember, the idea is to get a linear here. If we need to make this look linear, we need to get rid of that thing. But in doing so, we're going to multiply by negative 2 to get rid of the negative 1 half. We're also going to multiply by v to the positive 3 halves. But look at the right-hand side. Because we base this on this power right there, when we multiply that, it's going to get rid of both of these pieces at the same time. Not only that, but because we have this 1, that difference of, that, that difference of 1 that we have here, when we multiply here, this power is going to be 1 less or more, depends on whether we have positive or negative, than that power. And what happens is we're going to get v to the first. So when you're doing these Bernoulli equations and you have the correct substitution and you substitute this in here, it's going to leave you with something that you need to get rid of. Multiply every term, that's both sides with distribution, to get rid of that. And what's going to happen is that these two sides, the v's are going to be gone. This right here will be a difference of 1 between these two powers. So that when you, when you get rid of those terms, when you multiply those terms, and you add your exponents together, the difference of 1 says you're going to get v to the first. It's going to leave you with a linear. So let's do that. Let's multiply this whole thing by negative 2 v to the positive 3 halves. Negative 2 v to the positive 3 halves. So if I distribute to every single one of these terms, negative 2 times negative 1 half gives me positive 1 v to the negative 3 halves times v to the 3 halves. Remember, when we multiply common bases, we add our exponents. So this and this, done. We get dv dx minus, it's going to be plus negative 2 times negative 1 gives us plus 2. But look what happens. You know what? I'm going to write this out a little bit differently. So I'm going to show you this. I'm, I'm, going to show, I'm doing too much, waving my hands a lot. So I'm going to show you what happens. Here's the negative 2v to the 3 halves that we had, or that we have, times what we had already, our negative 1 half v to the negative 3 halves dv dx minus. We have the v to the negative 1 half up here already, but now we're multiplying by negative 2v to the 3 halves. On the right-hand side, we have v to the negative 3 halves times negative 2 v to the positive 3 halves. This is what's going on here. We're going to cancel this whole thing out. Negative 2 with negative 1 half, positive 1. v to 3 halves times v to the negative 3 halves, positive 1. We get just dv dx. We have minus, oh my gosh, negative 2, that would be plus 2. We have v to the 3 halves. Remember I told you there, there's a difference of 1 in those exponents. That's what the substitution does. v to the 3 halves plus negative 1 half. So that when I add these exponents together, we're going to get 1 every single time. v to the first. That's what Bernoulli equations do. They create a linear for you equals on the right hand side v to the negative 3 halves times v to the positive 3 halves it's the same thing that happens here they have to be the same that's how the substitution is working the substitution is based on that power so that when i subtract one or i take a derivative and i subtract one well that difference of one here makes it when i multiply to get rid of whatever this thing is it's going to be this positive one but it's going to create exactly the same exponent over here it's really neat we get just negative 2. This is exactly what the Bernoulli equation is supposed to do. It says that's pretty close to linear. Let's write it as much as possible. It says this guy's got to go. Let's make a substitution that uh, has y to the basically uh, 1 minus 3 would give you a this difference of 1 in absolute value. Uh, let's talk about it that way. So that when I solve for y and I take my derivative this piece replaces all of my y's 
But what's, what it's creating for us is this idea that when you multiply whatever it takes to get rid of this piece, these two sides are going to be identical. I'm going to multiply by whatever it is to get rid of this. It's going to also get rid of this. But there's a difference of one here between this exponent and this exponent. So that when I add the opposite of this, it's going to give me positive one. That happens all the time. That's just created a, uh, this whole nasty thing into a linear differential equation in terms of v. Notice we had to replace the dy dx. We had to replace all of the y's. We did that. And by the magic in, in our formula here that I sort of explained to you, we now have a linear. Now just do the technique for linear. So we're getting a lot of practice on this. We know that for our linear differential equations, we need an integrating factor. Oh, we know that. We know, I'm not going to, man, I'm not going to repeat that. I spent a long time talking about linear equations, linear differential equations. So we need something that we can multiply that repeats itself but also gives us this and as far as the, uh, the derivative of an exponential. So our integrating factor here is going to be e to the 2x. Let's multiply it everywhere. If we multiply everything by e to the 2x, I had the dv dx and the 2v and the negative 2. And if we multiply everything by e to the 2x, Well, on the left-hand side, what we've done, and you can check it right here, the derivative of this piece is 2. That's exactly what we're looking for. We've created the result of a product rule. The product of which would be e to the 2x times v. This goes back to our linear differential equation, so if you don't remember that, you need to watch that video. Or if you haven't watched the video, that's really important because this can look really confusing if you don't understand what's going on. I spent a lot of time explaining that. So if that's the result of a product rule, here's the product. This was not taking the derivative of, and neither was that v. So we're going to pull that together. And now we just need to take an integral of both sides. So the derivative of with respect to x, if we take an integral on both sides, integrals undo derivatives. On the right-hand side, we've got negative 2 e to the 2x, so you could do a little sub, uh, u sub or, or think about it in your head. We get negative 2 e to the 2x, but divided by the derivative of that, because that's what u, u subs do, plus c. So our 2s are going to go away. So we get our e to the negative 2x times v equals negative e to the 2x plus c. Now there's two things we got to do that happen in all of our substitution techniques. We're going to solve for v as much as possible, but then we have to replace v with what we substituted for v. So yeah, substitute as v. So let's go ahead and multiply both sides by e to the negative 2x. If we multiply by e to the negative 2x, this will give us v. This will be negative 1. Hey, e to the 2x times e to the negative 2x gives you e to the 0. e to the 0 is 1, negative 1. But then the constant gets multiplied times e to the negative 2x. Well, we're pretty close. maybe right like that, but then we're going to have to go and substitute back to get in terms of y. We use our substitution to get away from y's, we're going to use it to get back to y's. My recommendation, don't do it here, don't do it here, do it here. I'm going to substitute back for this. So y equals, or sorry, v equals 1 over y squared. It just allows me to think of this as a recipro uh, reciprocation idea. So if we have 1 over y squared equals an expression, then y squared equals 1 over that expression. I want to talk through it one more time because it's, um, 
It's a really important, oh, sorry, uh, this should be a minus. Something looked a little funny. It's a really important idea for us to master, to have down. So the idea one more time. We're still working on substitution techniques. And a Bernoulli equation is one that has a very specific substitution to it. It says, I want something that looks pretty close to linear. So we write something that's pretty close to linear. We make sure our dy dx plus or minus a function that has y to the first power. That's what I want equals something that has a y to any other power that's not 0 or 1. Then what these, this Bernoulli equation idea does is just fantastic. It says, let's, let's call v not a direct substitution for one of these, but something that when I take a derivative of it is going to let me replace v with something, and the derivative of which would have an exponent on v that's exactly one different. So the number one different from whatever this is going to be. Well, that's this substitution. That's take, take one minus this number, and when we take a derivative of it, it's going to subtract one from it. Obviously, if I'm taking a derivative of this, it's going to subtract one. It's going to be one different. So this piece, when I undo it, when I multiply by whatever the opposite uh, exponent is, it can be positive, it can be negative. I can't say all the time multiply by the positive because we'll have... We'll have positives up there, we'll have to use negatives. So whatever this power is, it's one different from that. Based on the fact that we have to do a derivative, obviously we're going to anyway, we've got to get dy dx. So in solving for dy dx, we're getting a power that's exactly one different from this. When we start putting this in our, substituting this into our differential equation, this is going to be, and because we base this on that power, this is going to be exactly the same. This is going to have a power that's one different. I, I, in absolute value, it's uh, one less than whatever these powers are. It's always different by one. I can't say one less or more because of positive or negative, but this is always different by one. So that when we multiply to get rid of that exponent, this number two, but that exponent, well, here and here, I'm always going to get no v's. If I get rid of this one, I automatically get rid of this one. That's pretty cool. But this one, when I multiply by the, the appropriate term to get rid of appropriate factor to get rid of these two v's on the, both sides, it's going to leave me with v to the first power. So Bernoulli says linear, pretty close. Let's make a substitution and make it exactly. We want a linear in terms of v. And then we use our linear techniques, linear differential equation techniques, to solve the rest of the way down, make sure we're substituting back in at the very end for v into terms of y. I hope that makes sense. We have like five more examples that we're going to do, so we'll pick this up as we keep going. I'm not going to spend a whole long time explaining after this. The main idea is find one term that has y to the first, find one term that doesn't, and then do y, v equals y to the 1 minus that power. It'll create something where you have a difference of 1 in your exponents. When you undo this one, you automatically undo this one, and you automatically get a power 1 to force this thing to be linear. Awesome. Let's try some more. Let's try our next one. So we have this differential equation. We're looking at it. We're going, that, that doesn't, doesn't look like anything that's nice. Uh, I certainly don't want to try homogeneous on it. That's crazy. Uh, it doesn't look separable. I have y's in a couple places. Oh, wait. I've got y's in a couple places. Do I have a term, something that's added or subtracted, with y to the first power? Do I have a term with y to another power? Yes. That right there, when you get that, when you see that, you go, I want your head to just flash for me. I have a dy dx, great, no y's. That's important, you can't have any y's there. I've got y to the first, I've got y to the third. So this is what we're looking for. Now, it's not written perfect, so when you get these, these equations that have y to the first on one term and y to, to another power on a different term, we do have to write them as much as it's possible in terms of linear. Remember what Bernoulli's doing. Bernoulli has taken a substitution that's going to force this to be linear. And how it does it, it creates a difference in your exponents by one. So that when you undo one exponent, it creates a power one to create linear. So when you do one exponent on both sides, it's going to create one in the middle. Well, let's get it as close as possible. So as close as possible means you need a dy dx by itself. 
you need to have y to the first power being added or subtracted to that as a term, and you need y to another power on the other side, as close to possible as a linear, so that when we do our substitution, it becomes a linear. That means that this thing's got to go. So if we divide everything by x squared, We get this 2xy over x squared equals 5 over x squared y cubed. I'm also going to do one more thing. I'm going to simplify this, but I always leave my y's hanging out a little bit like this. 2 over x times y equals 5 over x squared y cubed for two reasons. Number one, I want to really emphasize the fact that this is pretty close to linear. Hey, look at that. I get dy dx. I get plus something y to the first power. That right there is pretty close to what I'm going to have as far as my... Uh, my p of x for a linear. That's why it's even written as p of x, q of x. It's really close to linear. That guy's screwing it up. So this is what the Bernoulli equation does. It says this looks really close to linear except for that guy sucks. So let's take care of that. Let's, let's, use, our, let's use our substitution. So that we create this... Um, we create this, this thing that we're going to multiply when we take a derivative that's going to get rid of this. So when we, when we take our 1 minus our power, we're going to get v, to, v equals y to the negative 2. And much like the last example, we're going to have to solve this for y. Much like every substitution technique, you're going to have to solve that for y because every substitution that we're doing is replacing the y's with something and the dy dx with the derivative of y with respect to x in terms of v and x. This is different because it's not a direct substitution like we've done. It's a smarter substitution. It's one that's saying, pretty close to linear, let's multiply by something that makes it linear. So we do have to solve for y. We do have to take a derivative of y with respect to x. And we do have to make our substitution. I know I'm going quickly through the substitution because we've done it so many times that we should know at this point, I'm going to re be replacing my y's. I'm going to be replacing my dy dx, and it's all right here. So every instance of y becomes v to the negative 1 half. Every instance of dy dx, which there's only one of them in a linear, becomes this. So let's replace that right now. So dy dx, no. dy dx was negative one half v to negative three halves dv dx. Um, well, let's see, what's the next part of it? Well, we got uh, uh, two over x. Okay, so that, that we don't replace, but the y we replace, y we replace with, let's see, what, what is y? Oh, here it is, v to the negative one half. On the right hand side. 5 over x squared we don't replace. So we're only replacing our y's here. But when we do it, we get this v to the negative 1 half cubed. Replace dy dx, left the x's. Replace the y left the x's, replace the y. Why we're doing that? That looked fine as far as linear. It was this, that looked pretty good too. It was this piece that says this doesn't look linear. We're really only trying to replace that. It just so happens that when we replace one y, we've got to replace all the y's. You can't have three variables. So this one just kind of plays along. After we take a derivative, it's creating for us, because we subtract one from it, it's creating for us something that when we replace y with this power and take a derivative, it has something that is one less than this power. So this, uh, there, oh, I can say less. It's one off. It's one off. So that when I undo it, you go, wow, that, that looks crazy. Well, how would I make it better? I get rid of this because my goal, remember my goal, it's trying to get linear. We want to multiply so that we have the dy dx by itself. Let's do that. 
So when we multiply everything by the same exact thing from the last example, uh, this v to negative 2 v to the 3 halves. I'm not going to show it like I did last time because it's very, very similar, but negative 1 half times negative 2 is positive 1. v to the negative 3 halves plus 3 halves is 0. v to the 0 is 1. This whole thing is gone. We just get dv dx. This is what we're trying to do. This is what the Bernoulli equation says is going to happen. We're going to get a linear. We're just trying to make it look linear. So when we multiply, you go, yeah, okay, I've got to multiply by that. But the way we structure our substitution is that because a derivative always subtracts one from this, when I multiply by the opposite term of the opposite sign and I distribute, I'm going to get something that gives me positive one there. So I'd have a I'm going to write my 2 over x, I'm going to write my v to the negative 1 half times this negative 2 v to the 3 halves. We distribute that. On the right hand side, we have a negative 10. Can you see where the negative 10 comes from? I have 5 times negative 2 over x squared. But this is v to the negative 3 halves. v to the negative 3 halves times v to the positive 3 halves is v to the 0. That, that multiplication right there and getting rid of this factor is always going to get rid of your v factor on the right hand side. Uh, that's because we structured this substitution that way. <clears throat> on the, in the middle, we get this dv dx. That looks pretty good. But we're going to now get minus 4 over x. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4 over x v to the, this is the magic, this is what happens every time because we structured it correctly. Negative 1 half plus 3 halves gives us positive 1. Now that's a linear in terms of v and x. So use your technique for linear. We know that our row, our integrating factor here, would be e to the ln of negative 4 over x. I've done this many times. So that would be e to the negative 4 ln x. Or if we want to think about it this way, e to the ln of, let's say, x to the negative 4. Or e to the ln of 1 over x to the 4. That would work. Or just simply 1 over x to the fourth, because if we get rid of our e and l and our n, there's a composition of inverse functions. So I know that our row of x is 1 over x to the fourth. So we've taken this, we've looked at it, said that's pretty close to, that's not even close to linear, but I see a y to the first power, y to the third. Let's make it as linear as possible. Let's make a substitution that when I find a derivative, and I plug in this negative one half, it's going to give me the exact same power on both sides. So when I get rid of one side, I get rid of both sides. Also, it's giving me something that is one power off. So when I multiply this times the thing that gets rid of that, it's giving me power one. We do all that. We get rid of the term that we don't want, the factor we don't want. We get something that's linear, and then we do use our integrating factor. Do these problems take a lot of work? You bet. Yeah, they take a long time. And now we're ready to finally start using our integrating factor so that we find the result of a product rule, write it as a product rule, and integrate the other side. So we had dv dx. We had minus 4 over x times v, and then equals negative 10 over x squared. But now we're going to multiply by our integrating factor. We're going to multiply by this 1 over x to the fourth, it's going to distribute. And now we can simplify some stuff. So 4 over x times 1 over x to the fourth is that 4 over x to the fifth. And then on the right-hand side, negative 10 over x to the sixth. 
This is what those linears do. Uh, they create the result of a product rule. So when we when we get to this point, we need to realize that what we why we multiplied was to create the result of some sort of product rule a few videos ago. This would have been a piece that was not that is not the derivative of anything. This was like the leave the first alone derivative of the second. So this would have been the result of something with a one over x to the fourth. This would have been the derivative of that. Well, you can double check that if you really want to. Bring up the negative four, that would be negative four x to the negative five, that's right there. But that piece would have been the result of not taking a derivative. That's why we get that v every time. On the right hand side, we have something that should only be in terms of x. If you have v's over there, you've done something wrong or this, that this technique won't work. So these powers should always cancel at the same time. Well, if this is a derivative of x, if this is the result of a derivative of this piece with respect to x, an integral will undo that. We get 1 over x to the fourth times v equals, well, on this side, we can think about that as negative 10, x and negative 6, so we'll pull out the negative 10. So we'd have negative 10 x to the, remember we're adding one here, negative fifth divided by new exponent, negative 5 plus c. So this gives us this 1 over x to the fourth, that's looking good, times v, all right. Negative 10 divided by negative 5 is positive 2. If you want to move that x to the negative 5 back, back down to x to the fifth, you can. Let's see, I hope you're still with me on this one. We're just doing some algebra now. What's the next thing you would do? What's the next thing we have to do? Well, we have to plug in whatever our substitution was for v, but then we also have to get rid of our x to the fourth. So I'm going to solve for v as much as possible first. I'm going to multiply everything by x to the fourth. So x to the fourth gone. x to the fourth gives me 2 over x. x to the fourth gives me c, x to the fourth. And now we're ready to substitute back. So we use our substitution to get into these. We're going to use it to get back to y's. Well, let's see, what was it? Yeah, it's way over here. So all the way down, we said that v equals this. Yeah, v equals, v equals this. Or v equals 1 over y squared. I like that substitution better. The reason why I like it better is because it tells me what I need to do. It tells me I'm going to have to reciprocate this to get not 1 over y squared, but y squared. That means in order to reciprocate this, I need a common denominator. I need one fraction. So I'm going to take just a moment. I'm going to multiply cx to the fourth by x over x as to get a common denominator. That's going to give us 1 over y squared equals 2 over x, sure plus cx to the fifth over x, which means that we can write that as one fraction. If 1 over y squared equals 2 plus cx to the fifth over x, then y squared itself, well, that's got to be x over 2 plus cx to the fifth, or cx to the fifth plus 2. That's the idea with these, these Bernoulli equations is we're trying to make it linear. We're going to be using linear techniques. It's just we have to get rid of y to some other power that's not 0 or 1. How it works is we make this substitution v equals y to the 1 minus that power. What it's going to create for us, because, we're because it's based on that power, because we're basing on the power we want to get rid of. What it's going to do for us, it's going to create something that when I undo one side, uh, very v to one side, v to the power on one side, it's going to get rid of both sides. It's also creating something for us that when I make my substitution, I have a power that's exactly one off from that guy. When I multiply, it's going to give me power one. It's going to create a linear. We're going to try four more examples to really make this sink in. I want to explain something just a little bit more. I, I, I'm going to say a lot of times that in getting rid of something you have over here, this factor, you're also getting rid of this one. I want to show you that that, that happens all the time. Um, so, so real quick, if you're going to make this substitution, v equals y to the 1 minus n, 
Well, if you if you solve this for y, this is going to be a, a little bit of the theory behind this. If you solve this for y, you're always going to get y equals v to the 1 over 1 minus n. So you can think about this as multiplying both sides, time, or taking both sides to an exponent, so multiplying the exponents by the reciprocal of this. So 1 minus n, okay, how to get rid of that? 1 over 1 minus n. All right, cool. If you take a derivative, what would you do? Well, you'd bring down the exponent. We don't really care about that so much. But you would take that exponent minus 1. This is what I want you to look at. When we simplify that, when we get 1, or when we subtract the fractions, we would end up getting 1 minus 1 would give you 0. 1 minus negative n. This would give you 1 minus 1 plus n over 1 minus n, or n over 1 minus n, which means this. When you, and this is dv dn, when you replace your dy dx, you'll always be getting this 1 over 1 minus n. Who cares? That's a coefficient, no problem. v to the n over 1 minus n dv dn or dv dx. You're always going to want to get rid of this piece. This is always going to be the fraction of the exponents you want to get rid, rid of. Keep that in mind. But now watch. When you substitute this in for this, because this n is based on this, watch what happens. When you take this as y equals v to the 1 over 1 minus n, you would get v to the 1 over 1 minus n to the n. That's v to the n over 1 minus n. Here's what I was saying. Because of this Bernoulli substitution, whenever you make this substitution and you take a derivative, you're going to get this piece on the left, right there. You're going to get this piece on the right due to your substitution, which is why I've been saying last two examples that when you get rid of this piece, you inherently get rid of this piece because that's what the substitution is based upon. More than that, when we take a derivative, we're always going to get the derivative, let's see, uh, this is always going to be one, le one more than whatever your substitution is. So when we do that, when we multiply and get rid of these two pieces here and here, so on the left side and the right side, it automatically creates v to the first power in the, in the middle for, to make that linear. So I hope that's a little bit more thorough explanation about why this works. I've been saying that it works, but I never showed you that it would work all the time. So this is going to work all the time for us. That's really, really cool that when we substitute and we get rid of the left piece, we get rid of the right piece because it's based on that exponent. And our derivative makes the same exact exponent as what we're getting when we do our substitution. So let's move on to the, the last videos with that in mind. Okay, so next one. We have a differential equation, but it doesn't look that great. In fact, it doesn't look quite like the Bernoulli equation we think it might be. It's definitely not linear right now. Um, doesn't even look close to linear. Doesn't look separable. Doesn't look like any like easy substitution. So maybe what we can do is we can try to make it Bernoulli. M make it into what we want it to be by dividing by y squared. In fact, what I see here is I see uh, y to the third and y to the second. Maybe if I divide, I get a y. Now this guy's gonna play along, give us a different exponent, but let's go ahead and multiply both sides by y to the negative two power. The idea is I'm trying to get rid of that y squared and I see that that's just one power higher. So when we multiply by y to the negative two power, now you might be asking, why aren't you just dividing by y squared? I really am. Divide by y squared, dy dx. Divide by y squared, you get y. Divide by y squared, you get 6x over y squared. But but now we look at it and we go, oh, oh man, that's really close to linear. If this wasn't here, that'd be close to linear. Do you have two terms, one of which has y to the first power and one of which has y to not the first power? That's why we wrote that as y to the negative 2 instead of 6x over y squared so that we can fit the Bernoulli equation model. That's cool. 
Right now, what I would like you to do, if you can, make your substitution. So Bernoulli always has the same type of substitution. It says, I want you to replace y to, well, I want you to make the substitution v equals y to the 1 minus whatever that exponent is. Don't get your signs wrong. I'll screw the whole thing up. I just went through a proof of that if you don't mess this up, you're going to get something on the derivative that goes here. And something when you take the negative second power matches up exactly. But if you mess up your signs, it's not going to work. So v equals y to the 1 plus 2. That's the third power. So we're writing this as linear as possible. We're making our substitution y, v equals y to the 1 minus that exponent. And then like every substitution ever that we've done, we solve for y. Well, if v equals y to the third power, take both sides to the 1 third power, y equals v to the 1 third. Like every substitution ever, we solve for y, and we know that we're replacing two things. Every instance of y, hey, we've got that. That's going to be all the y's are going to be v to the 1 third, and dy dx. So we need to find that. I went through that proof just a little while ago to show you that when this happens, when you do your derivative, we always get the same exact exponent as when we take this to that power. Notice 2 thirds, 1 third to the negative 2 is negative 2 thirds. I proved it just a little while ago on why that happens. So our substitution is going to be very nice for us. We're going to take and replace our y's with this our dy dx with what we just solved for. So I'm going to do that right now. So dy dx, no, this thing. Plus 2x, yeah, that'll still be there. So plus 2x. But the y, well, we're going to replace that as well. That's what the substitution does. So times v to the 1 third power. Notice right off the bat, 1 third and negative 2 thirds are separated by 1. So when I get rid of this, I'm going to get power 1 here. On the right hand side, we get 6x still, but then we're going to have y. All right, so we're going to replace that y, but we're going to keep the negative 2 power. So v to the 1 third to the negative second power. These have to be the same exponent every time. They have to be off by 1, so that when I get rid of these two exponents, that's got to give me a power 1. So let's do that now. What we're trying to do is we're trying to make this linear. It's pretty close. We're coming with a substitution that when I get rid of this thing, it's going to force that to be a power run, power 1. When I get rid of this thing, it's going to force this v to disappear as well. That's how this Bernoulli equation works. So we need to get rid of this so that we have our dv dx. Then we'll get a power 1 linear, and we get no more v's. Think about what you would have to multiply by. So we're going to multiply both sides by 3 for the 1 third, v to the positive 2 thirds, and the same thing there. So 3v to the positive 2 thirds, 3 kills the 1 third, v to the 2 thirds, v to the negative 2 thirds, this is all gone. That's going to be dv dx. Plus, remember this is going to distribute. So 3 times 2 gives us 6. Sure. x, we still have an x. But then we have v to the 2 thirds times v to the 1 third. 2 thirds plus 1 third. Oh, v to the first. On the right hand side, 6 times 3 gives us 18. We still have an x. But since this is v to the negative 2 thirds, and this is v to the positive 2 thirds, negative 2 thirds plus positive 2 thirds is 0. It gets rid of our v. I proved it that that's going to happen every time. So we have something that's linear. Nice. Let's go ahead and find our integrating factor because that's how we solve linears. So we're going to find our rho of x. We know that rho of x says one thing. It's got to be e. 
it's got to be an integral of this right here has to be, re be the result of a derivative of your exponent. So undo that to find the exponent itself. When we integrate 6x, let's see, add 1 is 2, divide by 2, so 3x squared. Let's multiply everything by that. So we have a dv dx plus 6x times v equals 18x. And we're going to multiply both sides, so every single term, by that e to the 3x squared. Check it out. What's the derivative of 3x squared? That's what you want. On the left left hand side, I don't even care if you rewrite that. It doesn't matter. What you've done inherently is you've created the result of some sort of product rule implicitly with respect to x, where this would have been the first factor and that v would have been the second factor. You can see it right here. Leave the first alone here. Take the derivative of the second. Oh, if this is the derivative of the second, the second is v. On the right-hand side, we have an 18x e to the 3x squared. Not too bad. So we know how to undo derivatives. We know that integrals with respect to whatever variable you just took a derivative with can go on both sides. On the left-hand side, we know that we have e to the 3x squared times v. On the right-hand side, well, we're going to need a substitution. So if u equals 3x squared, du equals 6x dx, du over 6 would equal x dx. And so our integral here says, well, you got an 18. But our x dx becomes this du over 6. And then we have e to the u. So 18 stays. e to the 3x squared? No, we call 3x squared u. So e to the u. Yep, sure. x dx? No, we solve for that. Now we have du over 6. So when we simplify this just a bit, 18 divided by 6 gives us 3. Integral e to the u du. Man, we're almost done. We know the integral of e to the u is going to be e to the u with respect to u. We'll put a plus c up there. And then we're going to have to go ahead and replace that u. We know we made a substitution. We're going to have to get back to that. So u is 3x squared. Now we have another substitution to undo. We're going to have to, to replace v. But before we do that, I want to solve for v as much as possible. So I'm going to multiply both sides by e to the negative 3x squared. This is going to go away. So is this one, because 3x squared plus, remember we're multiplying? Add your exponents. 3x squared um, plus negative 3x squared, 0. 3x squared plus negative 3x squared, 0. But then this is going to get that e to the negative 3x squared. We have to distribute to every term. On the left-hand side, just v. On the right-hand side, we get 3 times what's going to be e to the 0. e to the 0 is 1. 3 times 1 is 3 plus c e to the negative 3x squared. I hope you're sticking with me here, folks. Now it's just some algebra, but it's important stuff. Now, lastly, we should know what to do. We know that we've got to replace the v with terms of y somewhere. Sort of look way back there. OK, uh, there's v. There's Oh, that's a better v to choose. So I'm going to replace v with y to the third. And you know what? I'm going to leave it just like that. Can you take a cube root? Yeah, you probably could. Uh, does it really super matter? Not really. Um, I would leave it just like that. So after understanding the, the proof that I gave you, that, that this is going to work every single time, the idea is write a linear, base your substitution on that number. You're trying to get rid of this piece to make it 
linear, and I showed you why that works just a minute ago. What it's gonna ha what's gonna happen is it's on your derivative, you're gonna get a piece that you wanna get rid of, but that exponent is always gonna match up to this exponent. When you get rid of one side, you get rid of the other side, that's fantastic. Also, because you're taking a derivative of this piece right there, you're, you're creating this exponent on, upon your substitution that is one off, uh, one more or one less than whatever exponent you're getting on your derivative. So when you get rid of this exponent, you're multiplying by something that's different than one here. That's gonna create, uh, that's gonna create something that's v to the first power, that's creating your linear. After that, find your integrating factor row, multiply it on all three terms, go ahead and do your integration, and hopefully you're getting the, the picture here. Man, I hope it's making sense. I wish I could ask you right now, but I can't. So we're gonna do three more examples to make it sink in, and then we'll be done. Okay, here we go. So something a little funky because we have a four-thirds power, but I want you thinking through this in, in, in the following terms. Number one, is it easy? Is it a basic integration? No. Remember that even though we're on a video that says Bernoulli equations, I don't want you to forget the stuff you learned. So if there's another way to do it, we might explore that because these, frankly, take a lot of work. And I'm going to show you that on the last example that I'm, well, I'm going to say. This can be done a different way. I'm going to show it to you in another video. So we think about it and go, well, is it something that's easy? Is it, is it separable? Is it a direct linear? Is it a substitution that might be easy? It doesn't look like it. But what I do see, I see a function, a term with y to the first, and a term without y to the first, and no otherwise. That's great. Let's try to write this in the form of linear as much as we can. So linear says this. It has a dy dx by itself. It has something to the a term to the y to the first power right next to it, so add or subtract it. That x has to go. So linear says, I need this piece by itself. I want a term that has, can have x's, sure, but it's got to have y to the first. And then over here, I have all my other junk. So x's and y's, great, because we're going to do a, a substitution if this fits the Bernoulli model. So if we divide by x, so gone, 6 over x, and then just 3. So we divide everything by x. That's exactly what we want. This is really close to linear. It just has a y to the 4 thirds that we're going to want to make disappear. Bernoulli equations do that for us. That substitution, the Bernoulli substitution does that. So let's make v equal to y to the 1 minus whatever the power is of the thing that you want to get rid of. That would be, let's see, 1, that's 3 thirds minus 4 thirds, so negative 1 third. Negative 1 third. Negative one third. Now we've got to solve, just like every other substitution ever, we've got to solve for y. Because not only do you want to replace the y, which you can't even do right now, you need to be able to find dy dx to replace that too. So um, maybe multiply both sides by negative 3. That would uh, raise both sides to the exponent of negative 3. That would allow you to multiply exponents. Negative one third times negative three multiplied exponents gives you one and then v to the negative third power. All right, can you take a derivative? Sure. So dy dx would equal negative three v to the negative fourth dv dx. We've created something that when I plug in this to this and raise it to the power, we'll have exactly the same exponent. That's awesome, that's what we want to have happen. So now we're ready to do our substitution. We looked at it and said linear, almost. Let's divide by x. Linear, ah, oh, that's gotta go. Let's do a substitution, let's solve for y so that our substitution works. Let's find dy dx so that our substitution works and now we're ready to rewrite this. So dy dx, no, I'm gonna replace it with this piece. plus 6 over x. Yeah, I like that. Y? No, I don't want y. I want the replacing y with a v to some power 
that's one different from when I took a derivative. So I'm going to replace this with v to the negative 3. Notice, always happens because of the case of the derivative. We talked about that many times. When you take a derivative, this exponent changes by 1. In undoing that, you're going to create this idea that when you're adding exponents, if you're off by 1, you're going to get v to the first power. On the right-hand side, we keep our 3, but I don't want the y. In fact, that's the whole thing I'm trying to get rid of. That's why I'm doing a substitution in the first place. That's got to be v to the negative 3 raised to the 4 thirds. And when you simplify this, what's I proved, this power is going to be the same as that power. We still have our 3 negative 3 times 4 thirds is negative 4. That looks good. That looks really good. So what now? Well, it doesn't look linear. Actually, you might be going, that doesn't look good. You're, you're right. But when we get rid of this, it's going to force it to become good. So when we get rid of this, in other words, when we multiply by negative 1 third v to the positive fourth power. The positive 4 and the negative 3, since these are off by 1, that's going to give us power 1. When I multiply this, it's going to give us negative 4. Oh, when I multiply by 4, it's going to, when I multiply by negative 1 third v to the positive fourth, it's going to give us 0. It's going to give us v to the 0. That's 1. So let's do that. So on both sides, we're going to multiply by negative one-third v to the fourth to try to get rid of this side. So negative one-third times negative three, that's positive one. v to the fourth times v to the negative fourth, that's v to the zero. This is leaving us with dv dx. When we distribute, right there, We'd have one sixth, sorry, uh, negative one third times six over x. That's negative two. I'll show you that to you. On the right hand side, we should see what's happening. Three times negative one third is negative one, and then v to negative fourth times v to the fourth, that's v to the zero, that's one. So this whole thing is going to be negative one. Here is where the, the awesome magic happens. Uh, negative one third times six is negative two. So we're going to get minus two over x times v. Ah, v to the fourth times v to the negative third. We're adding exponents, we get v to the first. This one. Now that's something that's linear. We like linear. Linear works really nice for us. So when we get this, we go, well, since we have something linear, we know our p of x, we know our q of x, e, well, function of x, and now we're going to find our integrating factor. So rho, e to the integral of whatever this function of x is, which means for us we get negative 2 ln absolute value of x, we're going to get e to the m. A lot of times what we'll do is we'll say um, keep x positive. That way we get rid of our absolute value. Happens quite a bit. They don't even show that in some books. You go, ah, it's just assume it's positive. And then we get ln x to the negative 2. That would be rho of x equals e to the ln 1 over x squared. Composition of inverse functions say that our multiply our integrating factor is just 1 over x squared. That's what we're going to multiply everything by. So let's do that. If we take that and we multiply by 1 over x squared, we're going to create the result of some product rule. On the left-hand side, you don't even have to read. You can rewrite it if you really want to. If you want to write this as negative 2 over x to the third, that's fine. You'll just see that it's that would be the derivative of this piece. 
this piece has to be the result of some sort of a product rule when we had the product of 1 over x squared times v. Now that we have that, we're going to integrate both sides. I hope you don't mind, but I'm going a little quicker on these ones because we've covered the, the derivatives of uh, linear differential equations, sorry, the um, solving of linear differential equations so much that we're going to kind of rip through these if we can. This would be the integral of x to the negative 2 dx. Don't do an ln, it's not an ln. We're going to get, let's see, add, add 1 is negative 1, divide by the new, so negative x to the negative 1 over negative 1. That's 1 over x plus c. Negative over negative is positive. Take that negative x one back to the denominator. If we multiply both sides by x squared, we get v. We also get x plus cx squared. Not too bad if we distribute that. We're almost done. We know with substitutions we replace y's with v's. Now we replace v's back with y's. So let's look back here. V was, you know what, I don't like the negatives. Uh, so what if we did, oh, I kind of wrote it funny over there. V equals y to the negative one-third. So we could write this as v equals 1 over y to the 1 third. That might be a little bit nicer. v over v equals 1 over y to the positive 1 third. And now this gives us the idea, so I don't like this negative exponents because it doesn't give me the idea of the reciprocal, and now I want to do that. So if 1 over y to the 1 third equals this, then y to the one-third itself equals x plus c x squared. What else could... Wow, that's not true. Sorry. I said reciprocal. I thought reciprocal. I didn't do the reciprocal. What else could we do? Now that we have... Reciprocal, reciprocal. Now that we have one third power, maybe we raise both sides to the third power just to make it look a little nicer. So raising to the third power, this would still give us one, but one third times three gives us y to the first. On the right hand side, we get one, but on the denominator, we get x plus cx squared quantity cubed. That looks a little bit nicer, so we don't have to deal with that one third power. Is it making sense to you? Are you seeing the ideas kind of work behind Bernoulli equations at this point? We're trying to get linear. It's close. We just need to get rid of one term that has y to a power that's not 1. If that's the case, we've determined that making v equal to y to the 1 minus that power does some pretty cool things that I've proved to you. Um, throughout the course of these examples and with an actual proof a little while ago that this will always work. It'll always create something that's linear for us. Then we find an integrating factor and the rest is just history. So let's do two more examples uh, to put this thing to bed. Okay, here we go. So our next instance of Bernoulli equations here and what you're looking for again is you're looking for two terms, one with a y to the first, one with a y not to the first, but you're also trying to write them as linear as possible to fit, fit our model so that when we make our substitution it becomes linear. We talked about why that is. It forces it. So when you deal with something like this, the form is really important, which means that that term and that term are on the wrong side. With linear, we want our dy dx all by itself. That's going to have to go. We want our plus or minus a term with y to the first. That's got to move. And then on the other side, the term with y to another power. That's got to move. So we're going to do two things. We're going to switch these terms, subtract, subtract, and we're going to divide by 2x.
So we've subtracted those two terms on both sides. That looks fine, but that 2x has to go. So we'll divide everything by 2x. And we'll get dy dx. No problem, that's gone. We'll also get minus y to the first. That's exactly what we want. Look at that. We want dy dx. We want minus y to the, a term with y to the first power. On the right-hand side, we'll do a couple things. We want to show this y last. Remember, we're trying to make substitutions on y, so the function of x is okay. I'm going to write negative e to the negative 2x over 2x. I'm going to show this y to the third at the back end. That is what's driving this substitution. That says, hey, if you make this substitution of v equals y to the 1 minus 3, v equals y to the negative second power, solve that for y. We know with substitution, we're always solving for y because we need to get rid of dy dx after we take a derivative of that. So let's solve that for y. We need to use that to make our substitution and get rid of that piece. Well, take both sides to the, uh, the negative 1 half power. That right there is going to let us substitute for y here and here. When I take a derivative of it, it's going to subtract 1, creating this piece that when I get rid of it, we'll also get rid of this piece with this raised to the third power. And it's going to create an exponent upon uh, a derivative that is 1 off. So that when I get rid of it, it creates a v to the first power. So let's find that derivative. I think we've done this one like three times now. So that derivative is not much different from anything we've done. But the substitution is important. Be careful on this. We're going to substitute dy dx, y, and y. We've got to get rid of every instance of y. dy dx is now that derivative. Let's replace it. Minus sign. OK, we'll get minus. But y we need to replace. Hey, v to the negative 1 half equals this whole nasty junk stays. But then y to the third power, we need to get rid of every instance of y. That's what drove the problem to make us choose a substitution so that we create the appropriate fractions upon uh, derivatives that allow us to get rid of both factors on the sides and one we create a, a v to the first power in the middle. So why? Nah, we didn't make it one half. But we still have that third power. Let's simplify just a bit. Here we're going to leave everything, but that we're going to make that negative three halves. It's always going to be the case. These two have to be the same. If they're not, you've done something wrong. This one's got to be off by 1 from that exponent. If not, you've done something wrong. And now we're going to try to make this linear. That's the whole idea is make it linear. So when we multiply to get dv dx by itself, which is what we're trying to do here to make it linear, we're going to have to multiply both sides. By negative 2 v to the 3 halves, negative 2 v to the 3 halves. Well, when we start distributing, hey, negative 2 times negative 1 half is positive 1. v to the 3 halves times v to the negative 3 halves gives us v to the 0. That's just dv dx. I'm going to rewrite, I'm going to do this and write it for you so that you see what's going on. We have a minus negative 2 v to the 3 halves times v to the negative 1 half. So I kept my minus. Here's my negative 2 v to the 3 halves. Here's my v to the negative 1 half. Let's let that hang on for a second on the right-hand side. Really see this. Negative times a negative, or minus a negative, gives you plus v to the... If these are always different by 1, when I, when I add the exponents together, you're going to get positive 1. Every time, it's just v. On the right-hand side, well, let's see. Negative times a negative is a positive. 
I'm not doing anything to get rid of that E, but two times one half gives us positive one, and then over X. No V. V to the negative three halves times V to the positive three halves, V to the zero. So this is just E to the negative two X over X. Man, now what? Hopefully you know now what. Now that we have something that's linear, and it is linear, we've got a dv dx by itself plus v to the first power equals function of x. We just need an integrating factor. Kind of cool about our integrating factor is it's a really easy one. Um, well, if I wouldn't have forgot the two, would have been a really easy one. Hopefully you didn't do that. So minus a negative, I said positive, I just forgot the two. So two is our function of x. When we find our integrating factor, e to the integral of 2dx, well, that gives us e to the 2x, which is really convenient because when we take and multiply everything by e to the 2x, so multiply by e to the positive 2x, e to the positive 2x, e to the positive 2x, e to the negative 2x times e to the positive 2x, add your exponent since e to the 0, that's 1. These are gone. On the left-hand side, we have the result of some sort of a product rule. But that product's already given to us, e to the 2x and v. So that when we take an integral on both sides, on the left-hand side, fundamental theorem of calculus says that's, that's gone. We just get e to the x, e to the 2x times v. On the right-hand side, the integral of 1 over x dx is just ln x. Um, a lot of times you're going to see no absolute value, and we'll say a little... Something like keep x absolute, uh, keep x positive, and then this will work with no absolute value. Makes it a little bit nicer for us. Well, now what? Um, could we solve for v? Well, yeah, I suppose we could. All we'd have to do really is multiply by e to the negative two x on both sides. So just multiply e to the negative 2x on both sides. And now we're ready to get back into our y's. So let's look at it. v equals y to the negative 2 or 1 over y squared. I like that better. It puts in my mind that I'm going to be reciprocating something. So v is now 1 over y squared. OK, we can deal with that. ln x plus c e to the negative 2x. And now all we have to do is think that, well, if we have 1 over y squared equals this expression, then y squared itself equals 1 over this expression. One more thing you might want to do. Because you have a negative exponent on this factor in the denominator, you can actually pull that to the numerator. That's about as good as we can get. We don't want to be taking uh, square roots. So y squared equals e to the 2x over ln x plus c. This is about as bad as it gets. I'm going to show you one more example because I want to illustrate that the next example we talk about, it can be done two different ways. So are you getting it? Are you getting that we want to make linear out of this and Bernoulli forces it to happen by getting rid of something that we don't want, a power that's not one for that y factor. Great substitution. Works every single time if we can write it in this form. Uh, then we solve for y. Like always with every substitution, solve for y. Use that to replace it later. But that lets you take a derivative of y with respect to x and get something to replace dy dx. So let's move on to one more example. Okay, so this looks crazy. And you go, that <laughs> doesn't look like anything ever. The only thing that looks pretty close is that. that. That looks okay. So we look at this and we're going, that, no. 
please no. Why? Why would you do this to me, Leonard? Because I want to. Uh, but secondly, because you're going to get stuff like this. It doesn't fit anything that we have so far as far as being easy. And so one thing we know is that when we have a term of y with a power 1 and something with y that's not a power 1, maybe we can fit linear as much as possible and use a Bernoulli make it fit a Bernoulli equation. So let's try how to do this, what not to do. Do not distribute all this stuff. You get y to the third. That ruins the y that you have. The idea would be, well, get all your x's on one side. Multiply by y to the negative 2 to get that power of y on the other side. So let's do that. Let's leave this where it is. Let's leave this x. Let's divide by this. And let's multiply both sides by y to the negative 2. The idea is we're trying to make this into linear as much as we can. There's one more thing that we got to do. Do you see it? we got to get rid of that x. So we looked here. We said, I want, I, I like the y to the first power. But all this other garbage has to go. Let's divide. We did. Let's get y to the negative 2 to get rid of this. We did. And now let's divide everything by x, including this. So we'll have a dy dx plus 1 over x times y. Remember, I'm always going to write my function of x next to my y, just in front of it, equals these x's are actually gone. So we'll get 1 over the square root of 1 plus x, uh, x to the fourth times y to the negative 2. My encouragement to you right now, because the rest of it is just some stuff we've done already, I would really want you to try this on your own. Try to go ahead and find the appropriate Bernoulli equation substitution. See if you can find solve for y. See if you can find the derivative. See if you can substitute. See if you can get rid of the piece that you're going to have over here. See if you can find your integrating factor. See if you can find the linear differential equation in terms of v. Solve it and replace y. See if you can do that. So let's see what we do. We know that we can make a substitution where we have v equals y to the 1 minus whatever exponent this is on the right-hand side that you don't really want that's making this not linear. This will undo it when you take a derivative and you get rid of the piece that you get upon uh, derivation of this after solving for y. So we get y equals, or v equals y to the third power. If we solve for y like we have to on every substitution, multiply both sides, or take both sides to the 1 third power, we would get 1 third, let's see, it's 1, 1 third v to the 1 third. Now this lets us take a derivative. And we would get 1 third v to the negative 2 thirds. <clears throat> Notice how this exponent, when I substitute it here, and this exponent, when I substitute it here, are off by 1. When I get rid of this exponent, it will cause this one to become positive 1, creating for us this linear thing, linear differential equation in terms of b, that we want this to be. Also, notice that when I take this power to that power, I get exactly that power. That means when I get rid of this thing to create this linear in terms of v, it's going to get rid of this whole entire factor as well. So let's substitute. Hopefully you've done this, and we can work this through as an integral in just a bit. So let's see, dy dx, no, this jump. Plus 1 over x, yes. y, no, no, we want b to the 1 third. Equals all this garbage, absolutely. y to the negative second? No. v to the one-third. That's our y to the negative second. Let's simplify just a bit. Let's make sure that we can see that this exponent will be exactly the same as that.
And then we're going to try to write this as linear, which means that we're going to multiply everything by the, the reciprocal of 3 and the re opposite reciprocal of that, sorry, the opposite of that fraction. So both sides get multiplied by something that removes this factor because linear has just dy dx in it and just some function of x, v to the first power, and just some function of x. So when we multiply both sides, hopefully you see it. We're going to have to multiply by 3. v to the positive 2 thirds. If we let that distribute, 3 times 1 third, that's 1. v to the 2 thirds times v to the negative 2 thirds, they cancel. We just get dv dx plus, let's show this, we'll have 1 over x, v to the 1 third times 3 v to the 2 thirds. Look how they're off by 1. Look how when I multiply by the opposite of that, it adds up to 1 every time. v to the negative 2 thirds times 3v to the positive 2 thirds. 2 thirds, negative 2 thirds, 0, v to the 0 is 1. 1 times 3 is 3 over square root of 1 plus x to the fourth. Here we get this dv dx plus, we have a 3, I'm not going to forget it this time, 3 over x, v to the 1 third, 2 thirds, ah, that's 1. Love it. Now you have something that's linear. You have dv dx, you have a function of x times whatever this variable is right there, and you have a function of x. Find your integrating factor. Composition of inverse functions, we have rho of x equals x cubed, just x cubed. Let's multiply that on all three spots. So we're going to go back up here, and we're going to say, let's take these things. dv dx. Plus 3 over x, v. equals 3 over square root of 1 plus x to the fourth. And let's multiply both sides, so every single term, by x cubed. So we've got x cubed, and we've got x cubed, and we've got x cubed. On the left-hand side, we have now created the result of some sort of product rule with respect to x on implicit differentiation. So this whole piece, and yeah, you can simplify this. This would be 3x squared. Oh my gosh, look at that, 3x squared. It's a derivative of x cubed. That's exactly right. Because if this is the result of a product rule, then we leave the first alone. We would have got x cubed from x cubed times the derivative of the second. Then if that's the derivative of the second factor, v would have been it. Because the derivative of v with respect to x is dv dx. And now we're down to something that we can just do with a nice integral with respect to x, both sides. x cubed times v looks fine on the right-hand side. Well, you're going to want a substitution. Thank goodness this came up with a substitution. So if u equals 1 plus x to the fourth, du equals 4x cubed dx. Let's divide both sides by 4. And it looks like we're going to get this, um, let's see, we have a 3, well, a 3, okay, so we got a 3. Let's keep the 3. Let's notice that x cubed dx is d over 4. Over the square root of u. 
Let's clean that up um, just, a, just a tad here. So let's pull out the 3 fourths. Let's write u to the negative, u to the negative 1 half power. We got to do the integral. We add 1, divide by the new exponent. So u to the positive 1 half. over 1 half. This is going to give us, let's see, 4 times 1 half is 2. This is going to give us 3 half, 3 halves u to the 1 half. Plus c. Let's put it back. So we know we have to be in terms of x. Let's go ahead and make our u back into 1 plus x to the 4th. So I'm doing that. I'm going to make a square root. One half is a square root, but inside should be u. So inside should be 1 plus x to the fourth plus c. Oh, man, we're so close. You know what we could do? We could just divide everything by x cubed. Let's try that. Let's divide everything by x cubed. To really make this into one fraction, so what I've done, I've made a 3 square root of 1 plus x to the fourth over 2, and then c, and if I divide by x cubed, I have to divide this by x cubed, and the c by x cubed. So to be, to be mathematically, almost like grammarly correct here, even though that arbitrary constant could easily be 2c, you'd want to do this. You'd want to show that you're getting a common denominator. You're going to want to show that. And you're going to want to show that then you're going to change 2c sub 1 into just c. So I'm going to have to move over here. Now we can say, you know what, that, that's still a constant. Let's just call it c. And we're going to do two things right now. So we're going to call that c, but also we know that v is equal to y cubed. Let's replace that. So we're going to have a 3, of course. We're going to have a square root of 1 plus x to the fourth. No problem. We're going to have a plus c, because that's still a constant. We found a common denominator, so 2c sub 1 made c. And then we're going to have 2x cubed. Just leave it. Um, we can take everything to the 1 -third power if you really, really want to. I wouldn't. I'd leave it just like that. It looks pretty good. And that's the idea for Bernoulli equations is you're trying to make something that's linear. It should be pretty close or you should be able to manipulate it to be pretty close. That was a nasty problem because it doesn't look close at all. In fact, I want to say a little blurb about that. We're going to have some embedded derivative problems next. And I'm going to show you how this is the result of one of those embedded derivatives. So I'm going to show you that. We're going to do this a different way. Uh, coming up later in a few few videos. So sometimes there are different techniques that we can use, and we've seen that a couple times already. This is one that maybe it's easier a different way. So anyhow, with Bernoulli, the idea is you're going to try to find linear. You're going to want dy dx, something with a y, so plus or minus something with a y, equals something with a different y. Your substitution always should be y to the 1 minus that exponent of the thing that you don't even want. What's going to happen upon your derivative, you're going to create some sort of a factor that when you get rid of it, it gets rid of both of these terms and creates a v to the first power. Then we have something linear and we know how to deal with that. I hope that I've made this make sense to you. I hope you see how it works. I hope you're not just running into this like, well, I just do this and this and it works somehow. I hope you saw in the proof that the reason why is because we manipulate that, uh, that exponent in such a way that your derivative helps you. And that's pretty, that's, that's nice. It's really nice. And then sometimes our integrals can just be nasty, but stick with it. You know how to do it. You guys are going to be fine on this stuff. So I'll see you for the next video. We're going to talk about a slightly different substitution technique that uh, I call embedded derivatives.
Time to look at some domain again. So very similar, I'm gonna keep this very short and sweet. When we're doing these, uh, these Bernoulli equations or doing these differential equations by that method, we're having to rewrite stuff, we're gonna run into domain issues, and we always know that we're getting linear, so we're gonna get a lot of the same exact domain restrictions that we did in those linear first order differential equations that we're gonna get right now. Um, so when we're rewriting this, obviously we're gonna to try to make this fit Bernoulli, so we're dividing by x squared, great, we simplify, awesome, but you divided by x, well you divided by x squared. X can't be zero, but because we're going to get down to this integrating factor rho x, equals e to the negative four absolute value, uh, sorry, uh, integral of one over x, to avoid that absolute value inside that ln and, and some domain restraint and some domain issues that we might get with that. Any negatives inside ln, that would be a problem. Uh, we avoid that right now. So it's not gonna simplify later very well if we don't do this. So we say, yep, you know what? X can't be zero for sure because we're dividing by X, but more than that, to deal with this right here, we go, well, let's just fix it all with this right there and do X is greater than zero. That takes care of the dividing by zero part that also takes care of the no more need of the absolute value. Same thing happens here, we're dividing by X, so X can't be zero. To avoid the absolute value, X has to be greater than zero. This one is interesting. This one, it's not necessarily the integrating factor that causes an issue. We're dividing by x. Sure, we're dividing by 2x. So I know x can't be 0. If it wasn't for this piece, that's where we leave it. But we end up running into this, hey, when you wrote your product rule, and we take this integral on both sides, well, in order to avoid that absolute value, any domain problems of having negatives inside of ln, no matter what we pick for our x, well, we're going to say that x has to be strictly greater than zero. So if you understand the idea to, to divide by a variable, you need to restrict the domain so you can't have that equal zero. To avoid absolute value, we just say, let's make it greater than zero. And that's what we're doing here. So on the, let's see, second, third, fourth, and the, the fifth problem here, the last one, I mean, that was, I think it was fourth and fifth. Yeah, sorry, second, third, fifth, and sixth problems. Second, third, fifth, and sixth problems. Last one was crazy, but we run into the same exact idea. Um, when we start taking this and saying, well, you know what, I'm gonna have to divide. Uh, what am I dividing by? Well, let's see, I'd be dividing by y. I, do y can't be zero. I know that that can't be zero, so y can't be zero. Uh, oh, I have something over x. x can't be zero. But now I'm thinking, I'm gonna have this integrating factor that has an integral of one over x. I'm gonna try to avoid that absolute value that helps me simplify, that avoids domain issues later on. And so we're just gonna wrap all that up and say greater than zero. So I hope that's making sense to you. Again, when we're trying to modify our differential equations to fit a technique, we are gonna run into some domain issues if we're dividing by these variables. So to, to, to save ourselves a whole bunch of work, later on we're going to restrict our domain right when we come up to it. Uh, we have hopefully mastered these Bernoulli equations, we understand all about them, and now we're going back and going, yes, but. But we have some issues. We're dividing by variables, those variables can't equal zero. To avoid absolute value to help the simplification and not having negatives inside of LNs in certain cases, we're going to restrict it even more than that and say let's assume that variable is strictly greater than zero. Okay, that is the idea. I hope that makes sense.